Masters of the Air is the newest World War II limited series from producer Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. This time, the Apple original looks at the flying fortresses that ran numerous missions over Western Europe and Germany. Is this as epic or as moving as Band of Brothers? During World War II, five miles above the ground and behind enemy lines, ten men inside a bomber known as a Flying Fortress risk their lives with the 100th Bomb Group, a brotherhood forged by courage, loss, and triumph sent to battle unrelenting flocks of German fighters. All right, so while I'm not going to consistently compare this series with Band of Brothers or even the Pacific, I will use it as a reference for certain portions. I mean, this has to be able to stand alone, though, really just as an individual show, because while the producers are the same and the content is similar, all three shows are told from wildly different perspectives. Now, this nine-episode limited series focuses on a group of pilots and crew that flew countless bombing missions as the Allies fought against Hitler and the Nazis. Now, a few of the stars in this include Austin Butler, Callum Turner, Barry Kewen, and Anthony Boyle. Now, I think what helped to make Band of Brothers so compelling and engrossing was the fact that the first episode spent the majority of its time introducing us to the characters and then creating reasons for us to care about them. More development, I mean, yeah, it came as the show progressed, and we weren't given full info on every single player up front, but right from the start, we understood the characters and some of their personalities. Now, for Masters of the Air, this doesn't happen. We're thrust right into the show and get to know the characters as it progresses. Now, for some of them, that works just fine, especially as players are introduced in later episodes. But when this all starts out, every character that's introduced is just a jumbled mess. And the first episode, it is very messy and disjointed because the timeline is presented in a way that doesn't reflect its reality. Now, there's a sequence where a character is recounting some behaviors of Callum Turner within the past. And as it's described about him singing and dancing, the scene switches to us watching Turner sing and dance and drink. Now, the problem is, though, it was set up as a flashback, but it's taking place in the present meaning we have to switch gears to figure out when in time some of these events are occurring. Thankfully, the story does find its footing by the end of the first episode, and while there may be some minor wonkiness across the series when it comes to cohesive storytelling, the majority of the rest of the show is pretty coherent and easier to follow. Now, going back to character introductions and development, everyone is thrown at us very quickly and then thrust into harrowing action almost immediately. Now, this is exciting, but because I had zero connection to the characters, there wasn't any anxiety or tension for their well-being, other than just, you know, a general concern. Now, later in the show, once we've spent more time with some of the characters, then I became worried for several of them. I mean, the risks were massive, and casualties were just a part of every mission. So I was scared to become attached to any characters just for fear they'd not make it. But I still really did become attached, and then I just had to gasp when some of them died. Now, I've got to say that the action in this, it's very exciting and full of nail-biting energy. I mean, there are so many aerial missions, and each one, it's just riddled with flak and bullets. Now, the special effects, they're mainly great as well, with this visual barrage of just the German Luftwaffe fighters speeding in droves towards and then through the American Flying Fortresses. Now, some scenes, they are absolutely chaotic with the amount of planes that are darting about. I mean, one sequence towards the end of the show, it's so packed with planes flying in just every direction. I mean, and all of them then firing their weapons. It looked very similar to Independence Day. Now, I appreciate that the show doesn't shy away from showing the fear and the terror that the flight crews experienced, especially with the massive amount of damage some of the planes experienced. Now, I was on the edge of my seat, and I was holding my breath many times because of how the flights were shot and then edited. Now, sometimes the shaky cam was a bit hard to discern, and some scenes were visually just jumbled, but the intensity, it was unmistakable and immersive. Now, some of the effects in the last couple of episodes, they were less than stellar within my screeners, but they also, they weren't fully finished, so there could be more polishing that the effects are going to get by the time that it actually airs. And these weren't major issues, just some of the missions looked obviously like CGI. Now, I think in an effort to provide so many story arcs and to deliver several different experiences that the 100th took on, the series ends up packing in too much, which then makes everything feel rushed. We're bounced around quite a bit, which doesn't always negatively mess with the storytelling, but several times the individual character stories become less engaging because we don't spend a ton of time focused on the experience. 
And when we do get focus on some, parts of those stories, they don't feel as fulfilling or necessary. Now, for example, there's a story arc that involves Belle Powley. Now, I like her in the role that she's playing, especially with some of the mystique that surrounds her, but there's a heavy focus on interactions between her and Anthony Boyle's character without providing a satisfying payoff for the amount of time that we spend on them. Now, something about this show that I both loved and disliked all at the same time was the focus that we're given on the Tuskegee Airmen. They're introduced in episode eight, and then they don't even get a full episode. I mean, despite their massive role in the positive outcome for many of the missions. Now, I do love that we get some of their story, but almost all of them, they just remain strangers to us. So at least the show, I mean, it's consistent in holding back character development across the board. But, you know, once they're introduced and we get to see a bit of their flying and their dogfight skill, their portion, it then takes a back seat and it provides a really disappointing lack of narrative for the remainder of the series surrounding such pivotal soldiers. Now, I appreciate some of the reality that we're given when it comes to the risks of flying these bombing missions. Camera doesn't shy away from wounds and gore. I mean, it's not gratuitous or overutilized, but what we're shown is effective in conveying the horrors and the dangers that the soldiers faced. The makeup and the effects, I think they're created well, making just horrific wounds look just as gnarly and painful as you might expect they would. Now, the first two episodes, they're dropping at once, and with each of them, they're about an hour, so we get a decent movie-length intro to this series. Now, this is going to be a weekly release, so if you are waiting to binge the whole thing at once, you're going to have to wait until March 15th to do so. Now, I think there's more than enough content and value in each episode to watch week to week, but I also love a binge. So watching a few together and then skipping weeks, that might be the preferable option. Now, something that has nothing to do with anything other than it made me chuckle, and you may catch it also... Austin Butler sounds like he hasn't shaken off his Elvis portrayal in this. I mean, his character is supposed to be from Wyoming, but he certainly got this drawl to his speech. And then Callum Turner, he had many moments that sounded to me like he was channeling Ben Affleck. And this wasn't annoying or off-putting. It was just a bit strange if I'd turn away from the screen while he was speaking because the mental image then became Affleck in the role. Now, for all the issues I had with this series regarding lack of character development and unbalanced story focus as a whole... I was sucked into the show. I mean, I was engrossed in the action and the drama of these missions. And because we're placed into the planes, we get to experience the claustrophobic confines the soldiers endured within freezing temperatures, and then all while watching their planes become decimated by bullets and shrapnel. I mean, it's harrowing and thrilling all at once. And by the end of the series, I did care about certain characters beyond just their well-being. I mean, I felt that I could connect with some and either cheer their success or grieve their death. So while the show stalls at the start with character development and investment, equilibrium is found by the second episode to deliver a riveting wartime drama despite ongoing shortcomings. The overall storytelling is unbalanced and choppy with some odd character-focused choices, and it's also disappointing with the minimal attention on the Tuskegee Airmen. The series still manages to captivate and enthrall thanks to immersive aerial sequences and large amounts of peril. But it could have gone from good to great by deepening the connection with the people who gallantly flew and fought. There's some sex and a little nudity, and then a ton of profanity and gory violence. I give Masters of the Air three and a half out of five couches. Now, this is still just a good series to check out. I just think it could have been way better. So what are some wartime movies or maybe shows that you enjoy? I don't have to be about World War II, just any war or conflict. Now for me, I love Hogan's Heroes, and even as problematic as David O. Russell is, I really do love Three Kings. Let me know some of yours, though, in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.